back, everybody, to Corrections, and let's get started. We, last week, in Corrections, I referenced an O. Henry story I did not realize. O. Henry, of course, known for writing short stories that had twist endings, if you will. I did not realize that O. Henry was a pen name. Nom de plume, as Shoemaker likes to say. His real name, uh, Henry. <laughs> and he got his pen name because he would give his stories to his wife. And when she would get to the twist endings, she would say, oh, Henry. <laughs> a couple people, a lot of people caught the reference uh, to the gift of the Magi. Two people said, hey, you stole that from the Muppets 1978 Christmas special. <laughs> but this is, this is no, uh, no judgment. This is a true story. And I'm going to stop there. A couple weeks ago, I said, this is a true story that happened. And a couple of people said, once you say this is a true story, you don't have to say that happened, because that's redundant. And people who watch Corrections want to keep it moving. <laughs> this is a true story. My dad, every Christmas, would tell my brother and I a story about Yussie the Yak and Morris the Moose, who were best friends, and Morris had beautiful antlers, and what he wanted more than anything was a bow for his antlers, and Yussie was a yak who wanted a brush for his beautiful yak hair. And I think you know where this is going. Morris uh, sold his antlers uh, to get the brush, and Yussie stole his hair uh, to get the bow uh, from Morris's antlers. I, one of the reasons I should, a red flag that this was maybe not a real story is that it was a Christmas story, and the characters' names were Yussie and Morris. <laughs> but the first time, I can't remember what age, the first time we were assigned Gift of a Magi, I read it. And my reaction was, he stole this from my dad. And I went up to my teacher and I had to explain it to her and she was crestfallen. Because obviously this is an author she respected, and a book she'd assigned over the years, and I'll never forget what she said when it dawned on her that he was a thief. She said, oh, Henry. <laughs> I talked about how Shoemaker's never on camera. One person said, wait, wasn't Shoemaker on camera when you showed the picture of him in a tank top? Oh, you've messed up your mics. <laughs> we have a Mike Scollins and a Mike Shoemaker. They share a name, and they're unpleasant in very different ways. <laughs> when Scollin says sun's out, gun's out, it's tank top. And when Shoemaker says it, it's like a snub nose revolver. <laughs> um, we talked about uh, Pavarotti. I called him a B-list celebrity. People were really upset. I clarified that when a person is Italian, the B means bellissimo. I was also told you could call him, you could, it would be very insulting to call him a C-list celebrity, but you could, in opera terms, you could call him a high C-list celebrity as that is the note he was very famous for hitting. Birds' nostrils are called nares. That comes up, obviously, because um, we keep showing this photo of the um, pigeon. Can we show the pigeon? Yeah, there we go. Those are, the, those are its nares right there underneath. Those are the exposed nares. <laughs> and uh, what was, we were told it was what was really troubling was that the um, bricks were in the wrong, going the wrong way. Some people reached out and said that's actually a style of brick. It's called soldier style when you do bricks that way. And then um, someone else said, Bud, I hate to run to the defense of your graphics department, but um, fully, fully exists in New York City. So. The only thing I'll say is, just because graphics was right 
on this doesn't mean they're good people. <laughs> because can you show the pigeon one time? This is uh, truly what happened. So let's, that's the pigeon. Uh, and I saw it and I was frustrated because people were criticizing the bricks, whether right or wrong, our viewers criticized the bricks. And I said, hey, can you just, can you put it on its side? And this is what they sent back. We also, this is a few weeks back now, we uh, wrote a thing saying, it's like Pete Rose being on second base calling his bookie. And it was a photo of Pete Rose who didn't play second base standing near second base with a first baseman's glove. And a lot of people said, hey, what are you doing? Pete Rose didn't play second and that's a first baseman's glove. And the reality is we, when we wrote it, we meant that he had doubled and was standing on second base. Because there's, you know, two ways to do it in baseball. But unless you are to the word with the graphics department, they will f you. <laughs> and I went down, because again, I get angry. I go down, knock, 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 and they're like, come in. And again, I, shame on me for teeing it up, but I'm like, do you guys not know the difference between first base and second base? And they're like, oh no, you wanna show us? <laughs> and then thankfully, we have, we have an HR person that we basically just put in the booth, the graphics booth, because like 95% of our complaints <laughs> come out of there. So there's just guy, this guy, Gene, who just reads, a new, he's like reading the Daily News and he's always like, hey, cut it out. And I was burning graphics on the fact that we had a satellite that exploded and then the pieces fell down. And in my criticism then, I, you know, I revealed I don't know anything about outer space. And I said the pieces wouldn't fall down because there's no gravity out there. There is gravity in space. And the pieces just wouldn't fall straight down because of uh, orbital speed and uh, lateral uh, velocity. And, and then someone else mentioned uh, inertia. And I thought that's a good thing to talk about because I kind of feel like at its core, graphics uh, I'm sorry, not graphics, corrections is, is a, sort of a form of inertia in that we're not actually getting anywhere. <laughs> like we're, this is the act of getting better, but I don't, I fear that there's not any actual, for example, the Irish prime minister came uh, back up again because he, you guys, he was here. And, uh, and I then even after having worked so hard on the pronunciation, I got it wrong again. It's T-Shock. But I even tried last week to watch it, and I made the mistake, because you, uh, a lot of Irish viewers have, have made it very clear it's T-Shock, and then I made a mistake of like watching, you can try to watch YouTube videos where people say it, but they're all like really old Irish men who are very, the way they tell you, it's like, uh, it's very easy to say the word, just push the bottom of your tongue against the outside of your teeth and press the air out through your nose and your mouth in equal measure. But don't say the top part of the T. Don't say the part that goes across. <laughs> Just do this part. Just think of a soldier style brick. <laughs> also, someone said, you know, you don't have to say T-Shock. You could just say his name. Here's the thing. That's his name. <laughs> I think it's a trap. That looks super easy, but something's going on right there. There it is. And I feel like if I said this the way I think it is, you'd all be like, it's me, Shock. <laughs> <laughs> he was here and nobody got me. They'd be like, oh, were you not? They were doing a table read of Wedding Crashers 2 and neither Owen or Vince were there. We didn't think to get you. This is my favorite comment of the week. If someone's frustrated, just wrote this. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, tried to call Sandberg last week. He didn't answer. Pretty upset. 
because when I went to NBC with Corrections and they gave us the seed money for it, <laughs> the promise was that I would be able to call my celebrity friends and get them to answer. And, well, you know, what's he got going on that he can't answer a phone call from me, you know? You writing down words that rhyme with nutsack? <laughs> So I almost, I don't know if I want to give him another chance. But at the same time, you know, I love him. He owes me. Nope. That's how it goes, guys. It's Backman Turner Overdrive. Not him. <laughs> it's Backman Turner Overdrive. So I'm glad we have taken care of that business. Also, the Mets second, base, uh, second baseman was Wally Bachman. And I'd show a picture of him, but graphics would probably put him in a catcher's mitt and a football helmet. <laughs> we did a um, surprise inspection where we read jokes that our writers had written that were too, did not meet the standard of the show, and we wanted to sort of shame them by reading them. A lot of people wrote, this isn't a correction, but we do feel like Allie Horde's joke was really good, and you shouldn't have judged it poorly. Her joke was, according to a new study, mice have feelings of sadness and depression. Ask scientists, did they say if it was because of the cancer we gave them? People really like that joke. Uh, Ian wrote, in honor of Disney World's 50th anniversary, Southwest Airlines has unveiled a commemorative custom design plane that features an outline of Cinderella Castle on the outside, but heads up, the inside is still full pumpkin. Not a word of support for that joke. I aired, and I was going to try to burn Ian for it. I made a mistake when I said it on the show, and I went back and looked. I said Cinderella's Castle, and a lot of people, one guy said to me, it's not a Cinderella's Castle, it's Cinderella Castle. It is not her castle, it is Prince Charming's castle, named after her, but she just lives there. It's not Cinderella's Castle, she just lives there at Prince Charming's castle. And there's one thing I will say about the guy who wrote me that. Uh, he's not married. <laughs> because, you know, I think at some point it was Cinderella's castle. And maybe when she first moved in, he was like, so I'm gonna name it after you at Cinderella's castle, but like, you know, it's my castle. You know, it's like mine and you, you just live here and we'll call it Cinderella castle, but I just wanna make sure. And then like a week later, one of his friends are like, did I see an apostrophe S on the gate? My Randy Newman now, have people have moved on from Bill Cosby and said he sounds like a Jamaican. Get up, stand up. <laughs> um, I'd like to do something a little. <laughs> I'd like to do something a little different. Um, can we put up a title card, maybe in a beautiful script uh, that says Reflections? And when we put it up, can we play some sort of thoughtful music? Um, welcome to Reflections. We've talked about this. Monday will be our first show back with audiences. We have done 241 shows without an audience after we left on March 12th. 2020, and I have a, a fair amount of nervousness and trepidation about audiences coming back. I just want to be honest about that. I will say that most of, of you who engage with corrections seem to not want 
the audience back, which is not super surprising to me because it always struck me that based on the way you are, you don't like people. <laughs> I want to assure you the corrections will always be without an audience. And having an audience back is very exciting in the way that the last, I know it's strange to say, these last 18 months has been really exciting you know, for terrible reasons, but we've had all these different challenges that we've had to overcome. And I think one of the biggest fears when you do a show like this is that they're going to be boring and nothing about the last two years has been boring. I mean, we did it uh, from an attic and we did it from uh, my in-law's house. And I was worried last September, I was deeply worried last September about how the show would feel coming back in the studio without an audience. And I think it's been pretty wonderful. And it's been really cool to have you here with us in this intimate space. And I think, you know, we all know what Buck's laugh sounds like. And we all <laughs> know what Wally's laugh sounds like. Still waiting on Paul. <laughs> Everybody but. <laughs> um, I should also stress, you know, I, I made some jokes about um, Wally being on the show last. It turns out we did not look closely at the last contract we signed with Wally, and there's some pretty onerous language. And if he is not on camera a fair amount, he has threatened that he'll start using white Sharpie. Um, so the goal is to try to take everything that we've like loved about the last almost two years of doing this show outside the way we were so used to doing it for the first six years of doing this show. So take that and bring that back with the excitement of having a live audience. That's the challenge. And I think, you know, you know, there is a expression, you know, necessity has a name and it is inventor mom. And so much of what has been fun about this era of the show are things you have to figure out because of the hurdles that have been put in front of us by circumstance. And I'm looking forward to the next part of it. And I hope you'll come along with us. The weirdest thing was I never, swear to God, never read a YouTube comment about our show until I started doing it in the attic. And then I realize now it's very easy to track. Nope. <laughs> like I started reading them because I was desperate for some level of feedback, right? You do the show in front of an audience. You don't walk off every night wondering how it went. You kind of in your head know how it went, but you start doing it in an attic and you think, oh, I should try to check in and see how this is going. And so I waded into what everyone said was a cesspool and I found some very nice people there. And I wanna <laughs> thank you so much uh, for the way that you've engaged with this show. Because we do feel like it's it's better and it's different, and we've enjoyed being on that journey. And um, that's the end of Reflections. And if we could just, again, do the script and uh, maybe something that matches the emotion of the moment. Uh, lastly, I'd like to close uh, Mike Shoemaker's birthday tomorrow. And it's a bummer because he makes a huge deal out of it. I'm of the mind that people of a certain age should stop making huge deals out of their birthday. A uh, shoemaker is well past that age. And yet every year, uh, you know, he rents out some weird room in the Bronx that we all have to go to. It's usually in the basement of some weird Catholic church. <laughs> and 
And the worst part is he does the same thing every year, which is we all show up and he's not there. And then they roll in one of those big cakes that like a lady jumps out of and every year it's him. <laughs> but he like makes us wait. And we have to go through this whole like weird, like where is he? I don't know where he is. And he's inside this cake and like the cardboard, there's something about the cardboard of the cake, like it like makes his allergies really bad. So he's just, you hear him like <coughs> <laughs> like inside the cake just like hacking coughs and we all have to be like oh I wish he was here it's so sad he's not, he's not here on his birthday oh and like meanwhile like he can't see us so we're all just like rolling our eyes at each other and then uh and then he pops out like nine we, we, he tells us to get there at 6 30 so like nine o'clock he like pops out of the cake and he's always like who's your no oh, Henry no See me next week.